Hello everybody, you're watching Electronic Science. Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to another video on Electronic Science. So today, um, we're going to be finally back with a video. Elephant in the room, I haven't uploaded my video for last week and that is because I've been working on a bunch of other circuits trying to figure some things out so that I can get some videos out here on YouTube and school's just wrapping up and uh, things have gotten a little crazy so I've had 100% uh, of my time to be down here working on some circuits but um, while I was working on this timer circuit I was trying to work on a, like basically an old-fashioned timer circuit no microcontrollers just like capacitors and transistors and LEDs and that's basically it no microcontrollers I came across something that was pretty cool now, what I wanted in this circuit, we're going to be using about four LEDs today, but in your circuit, you can make this as long as you possibly can. I mean, you can make this thing 10 feet long if you wanted to, 20 feet long. You can make it a mile long, um, as long as you have enough power. Um, but this circuit was rather interesting. So, I had four LEDs, and so if you could picture this, one, two, three, four, and one was supposed to turn on, the three others were supposed to turn off, and then the other one was going to turn on after a couple of seconds as a capacitor discharges and now the other one's supposed to go off and it's supposed to go like that. And it was just supposed to keep repeating. But I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I've been looking at some circuit diagrams online, but um, it wouldn't do that. It would keep two on at a time. But it, I've, since it's doing two on at a time and it oscillates back and forth, it makes a really cool effect. So I wanted to make a video about that. So without further ado, let's get started. So as you know, uh, we have a breadboard here, and I use breadboards a lot in my videos because really all I do is prototype these projects. Uh, when I do put them on a, like a, um, a prototype board or something like that, um, I don't really show it on YouTube, but someday I'm going to get into actually making permanent projects. But again, this project was a mistake, so this is why I'm doing it on a breadboard once again. So um, I'm going to make it look like uh, police lights, so I think I have a rough idea of how I'm going to rebuild this circuit, because I kind of just took it apart. Once again, the circuit was sort of an accident, so yeah. But anyways, I found this online from another YouTuber, and I thought, ooh, I'm going to make this. Now, I'm not sure if the YouTube video that I saw was fake, because I've really been having a lot of trouble with this circuit, but um, yeah, let's just see what we could do. So uh, what you're going to need is a couple of components. So what I'm using is these 2N3904 transistors. They look a little something like this. Uh, you can use just about any uh, NPN transistor. It'll work just the same, honestly. Um, uh, the only thing you really need is the, uh, the focus on, I guess you could say, is the resistor type and the capacitor value. Uh, so here what we're using is some 1K resistors and some 10K resistors. And then, in my case, I'm just going to be using these 47 microfarad capacitors. And they're going to be at 25 volts. Actually, um, I'm going to switch out to 100, uh, microfarad capacitors. That's probably a better idea. All right, so yeah, instead we're going to be using 100 microfarad capacitors because I remember the 45 uh, ones didn't work too good. But anyway, so what you do is you take uh, on the positive of your LEDs, so right here, okay, that's positive, and connect the positive um, rail to the positive of the LED through a 1K resistor. And then negative, all you need to do is just take a regular old breadboard jumper wire here and connect it to the negative as if you were setting up an LED circuit here. But it's kind of the exact opposite. Then what you need to do is put a transistor on your breadboard. And then what you need to do is connect the emitter to ground. Just with a regular old jumper wire. Nothing needs to be special with that. And then with the base of your transistor, what you're going to need is a 10k kilo ohm resistor right here. And you need to connect that to the positive rail. So I'm going to do that right now. Now what you need to do is, with your emitter of your transistor, take a jumper and connect it to a pin where the 1k resistor is. Kind of like that. And now, that's almost done. So now what you're going to want to do is take a capacitor. Now, the capacitor or microfarad, depending on what kind of microfarad capacitor you connect to there, uh, will vary how fast your LEDs flash and things like that, obviously. It's basically just like that A-stable multivibrator circuit. And connect the negative of the capacitor to the base of the transistor. And leaving the positive end out on an open rail. Then what you're going to want to do is connect this 1K ohm resistor from the positive end of the capacitor to the positive end of the breadboard. This is going to be our new positive rail. 
And then what you're going to want to do, once again, is put down an LED over here and connect the positive on the capacitor right there on the rail where that 1K ohm resistor is in the capacitor. Then you want to connect the negative to the negative rail. This is basically just a repeat now. Then you're going to want to grab another one of your 2N3904 transistors, put it off to the side a little bit. Then you want to connect your emitter to ground. Base with a 10K ohm resistor to the positive rail. And the collector back up to that 1K ohm resistor where the LED capacitor and all that other fun stuff is. All the way back here. Like this. And basically, all you're going to do is keep doing this circuit. Um, so you're going to connect the negative of the capacitor to the base of the transistor, connect the 1K to the positive of the capacitor, and do the exact same thing over and over and over again for the desired amount of LEDs you would like. So I'm just going to cut the video here because you've already had to sit through a lot of torture here watching me do this. And I will be right back with the four LEDs. So all I'm going to do is just repeat this two times. And then uh, when you're done, wait one second, because once you power on your circuit, things won't work. You have one other step you need to do, but that's at the very end when you're done adding your desired amount of LEDs. So yeah. And once you finish, your circuit should look a little something like this. So now that you have gotten to the end part of your circuit where you've added the amount of LEDs that you would like and you will want to close the circuit. So right now the circuit is technically open in a te kind of like an open state. So what you need to do is get another 100 mi uh, microfarad capacitor or whatever ferret capacitor you're using as long as it's the same ferret, right? And you're going to connect that somewhere down the breadboard or wherever you're um, putting the circuit on. Uh, a little bit of ways away from the entire circuit itself. And you're just going to put that there. I'll put it all the way at the end. Then you're just going to need two jumper wires. Now, in my case, I'm going to need two longer jumper wires. Now, you're going to want to connect the positive of the capacitor to the emitter of the first transistor. So take a jumper, connect it to the positive rail of the capacitor, and then connect it to the emitter of the first transistor that you ever put on the board. Like that. Then take another jumper and connect the negative of the capacitor to the base of the last transistor. Kind of like that. And now your circuit should be ready to go. All right, everybody. So let's connect it up. Right now we're going to be using four volts. So I'm going to connect the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. As you can see, they're kind of flashing like an A-stable multivibrator, only there's two of them. As you can see, this is pretty cool. And unlike, unlike the um, A-stable multivibrator, you don't need to run this off of 12 volts. Now, on the A-stable multivibrator, if it was anything lower than 12 volts, it would really stop flashing. And if it was anything over 12 volts, it would be flashing, but it would flash so fast, it would almost be too fast for the human eye to pick up. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the camera for you guys. And I'm going to have my power supply right here. And right now it's at 4.4 volts. And you can see when I increase the voltage, the LEDs blink much faster. This is a result of the capacitors charging and discharging much faster. And you can basically set the voltage as high as you want in the circuit as long as it doesn't exceed both your LED rating, which as long as you have resistors uh, connected to it, the right ones, you should be fine. Your transistor rating and your capacitor rating, which my limit on here is 25 volts or else my capacitors will pop like popcorn. As you can see, 6 volts is blinking really fast. Let's go up to 12, 13 volts. You can see the LEDs are extremely bright, and it is flashing so fast it almost looks like a cop car. And yes, I did do the blue and red LEDs to make it look like a police car. And if I lower the voltage now from 13 volts, let's make this a lot calmer. We're going to go down to... Oh, too far. <laughs> let's do 3.2 volts. You can see it flashes so slow. 
Now this circuit is very um, useful to build, especially. It teaches you a lot about electronics because obviously you're building a circuit, but it teaches you more specifically timer circuits in electronics. And this is very useful in many applications in the electronics field. You know, because you might need to have something on for a certain amount of time and something off for a certain amount of time. Right now, I'm just demonstrating it with LEDs, but you can control a whole wide array of things. Now, the circuit is also useful because, in, unlike any stable multivibrator, which really has no purpose, which I made in a couple of videos ago, um, this circuit, depending on what voltage you put into it, will vary how long the load is turned on. So, for example, if I lower the voltage, you could see now that the load isn't as bright because obviously right now I'm running it on 2.8 volts, so the LED just barely turns on at this voltage. You can see it's still blinking slow, and you can even use a boost converter or something to step the voltage up a little bit to your load while still keeping the main voltage low. This way, it'll be um, you'll still have the rated voltage going into your electronic device that you're trying to, you know time on and off with this type of a circuit, uh, but also have the lower voltage into it to um, make it go slow. Or what you could do is keep the higher voltage going into it and use a higher value capacitor or even a little bit of a higher value resistor so it takes longer for the capacitors to charge up. That way it'll turn on and off slower. Now this is controlling two things. Now this circuit was actually discovered by me by accident. Now I know this, I'm not the first one to make this type of a circuit at all but uh, what my circuit had you know with the circuit i was building what i intended it to do was i wanted it to have just say so it would usually start off here and it would turn this led on and for a couple of seconds till the capacitor just charges that one would turn off and this one would turn on turn off that one turn on turn off that one turn on and you keep going now the odd thing is with this circuit is if i remove the fourth led it'll work the right way I'll show you guys that in a you second. See now I've taken out that last blue LED and just taken out the first blue LED so that the load is the exact same because blue LEDs are a little bit more higher power than the red ones. And you can see the circuit is now working how I intended this to be. Now the circuit was also supposed to work in a way where I can add more than three to this and it would do this exact thing. But unfortunately it's not. But I still thought it was really cool and it still teaches you how to build a timer circuit. So yeah, and I guess it benefits you as well because you can control two different things at once with one timer circuit. So yeah, I guess, you know, I love discovering things by accident and especially when they're useful, but um, this is a little less useful. It just turns um, something on and off and it goes in a row, which is basically, hence the name Chasing LEDs was a circuit I was trying to make, but instead I made a little bit of a timer circuit. So yeah. So there you guys have it, how to build a timer circuit. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it, please remember to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you guys never miss a new upload here on Electronic Science. Also, share this video with your friends and family so that uh, the channel gets spread around a lot and we grow as a community. Also, leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions on how I can improve this circuit, if you have any questions about this circuit, or have any video ideas in the future. But anyways, guys, I'm Electronic Science, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.